Hi, I am Nikhil and I am going to talk about KubeMCI, our new command line tool to manage multi-cluster ingresses. I am going to talk about what it does, why is it useful and how it works. But before I get started, I do want to point out that KubeMCI is not an official supported product. It's an exploration. We want people to try it out and see if it's useful. Secondly, as I talk about KubeMCI, I'm going to assume knowledge about Kubernetes and Kubernetes Ingress. If you've used Kubernetes Ingress with Google Cloud Load Balancer to create L7 load balancers, you can now use KubeMCI to do the same for multiple Kubernetes clusters. Doesn't that sound awesome? Let's see how it works. Our top use cases for KubeMCI are low latency and high availability. Let's look at this diagram on the right. We have two clusters, cluster 1 in GCP zone US Central 1A and cluster 2 in GCP zone Europe West 3A. Service Foo exists in both these clusters. Now if user Alice from California wants to lead service Foo, we want Google Cloud Load Balancer to send that request to cluster 1. Similarly, if user Bob from Berlin sends the same request, we want that request to go to cluster 2. This ensures low latency. If cluster 2 goes down, we still want user Bob to be able to read service foo. In that case, Google Cloud Load Balancer should send that request to cluster 1. That ensures high availability. Now how kubemci works is, it has a kubemci create command where you can give it a name, your Kubernetes ingress definition as ingress.yaml and a list of clusters in clusters.yaml. If you run this command, kubemci creates the ingress in all the clusters, in this case in both cluster 1 and cluster 2 and then configures Google Cloud Load Balancer to send the traffic appropriately. To pass it the list of clusters, you can give your existing kube config or in future we want to integrate with Kubernetes cluster registry. While this is a high level overview, you can also take a look at the code. It's open sourced. You can go to GitHub and you'll see all the code there. You can try it out and start contributing to the code as well. But let's take a look at a demo. For this demo, I have two clusters, one in US and one in Europe. I have my ZP cube config file, which has information about both these clusters. So this is the cube config file that I'm going to use with kubemci. I'm using a zone printer app for this example. What the app does is it prints the GCP zone that it is running in. I've created my zone printer app in US cluster and now I'm going to create the same app in my Europe cluster so that the same app exists in both. Once we have the setup ready, I'm now ready to use kubemci to create my load balancer. Let's look at kubemci help first. kubemci help prints all the available commands. There's create, there's delete, there's get status to get the status of an existing ingress and help and the version of the tool. So let's look deeper at kubemci create. We look at the help for kubemci create. This tells me I need to pass a load balancer name and some flags. GCP project is a required flag. The ingress spec is a required flag and cube config is required. So let's try it out. Let's run kubemci create. I'm going to run, name my load balancer zone printer lb. I have an ingress spec and I use zp cube config. It prints that it created the ingress in both those clusters, then created health check, backend service, URL map, target proxy, forwarding rules. It's creating all the resources required to configure Google Cloud Load Balancer. Once it's done, 
I can run get status command to see the status of my load balancer. To get the status, I pass the name and the GCP project it is in. And it tells me, yes, such a load balancer exists and this is the IP address. The load balancer is spread across two clusters, cluster US West and cluster EU West, as I want it. GCLB, Google Cloud Load Balancer, takes some time to configure. Once it's done, we can hit this IP address to ensure that it's working as expected. To do that, let's hit that IP address from a VM in my US cluster. As expected, it returns that the request was served from US West 1A. Let's do the same for Europe cluster. And in this case, we expect it to be served from the Europe zone. It was served from Europe zone. So this shows that our setup is working as expected. This is great. You should try it out and we'd love to get your feedback. Positive or not, any feedback is appreciated. Thank you.